Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and this is a video for Chapter 13 of the book Quantitative Social Science Data with R, Second Edition. So in this video, we are going to look at multinomial logit regression. So this is the first video on um, unordered outcome models. So nominal outcome models, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but this is where we have a outcome variable that is uh, categorical, not ordered. So we looked previously at binary and then ordered, and then this is the next step, <laughs> unordered. Okay, so um, we within social science, we do frequently have nominal variables, and there are times when we want to use them as... Um, as outcome variables. So, so one of the classic examples is uh, predicting people's vote choice where there's uh, more than two candidates. <laughs> so like in the US, there's, there's two candidates generally. I mean, there's more usually, but two sort of viable. Um, so what do you do when there's more? Um, so that's one, but I mean, there's lots of different examples. So again, we're gonna look at multinomial logit. Um, in this video, and we are going to use uh, an outcome variable that is people's party identification uh, from, again, the 2014 Scottish Social Attitudes Survey. Um, so we need to take, let's take a look at this variable. All right, so it's uh, SSA, and then we'll, we'll do the, uh, use the count function just to take a quick look. Currently, it's the one that's party underscore labels. Okay, so we see there's six values here and then a bunch of missing. All right, um, and we see that the labels are actually on there. Do you see how they're like kind of grayed out? Again, this is because it's coming from Stata. Um, and what's nice about that read underscore DTA is that it brings them in, um, but they're grayed out because they're, they're, they're kind of hidden right now. Okay. So we could do an analysis where we use all of these. The problem is, is that unordered regression models, so multinomial logit, and we'll also look at multinomial probit, um, are very, are very fickle uh, because there's a lot going on there. So these these categories here have kind of a small number of observations, um, and so what we're going to do is actually get rid of them. All right, so let's do this. Um, and and we, we're just gonna make them missing. I mean, another idea could be like, put them as other party. The problem is, substantively, theoretically, you wouldn't group liberal Democrats, green party, green partiers, <laughs> like greens, and UKIP together. Like that would be a really bizarre collection of folks. Um, so we're just going to make them missing. All right, so we're going to create a new variable that's ingeniously named PID1. So we're going to do SSA. All right, we're going to use the mutate function here. So mutate, we're going to do PID1. Um, we're going to call it like, you'll see why we're doing this. We're going to do two steps to this. Um, we're going to do as factor and then party labels, right? This is the original. So we're going to make it party labels because right now it's it's showing up as a double uh, because the labels aren't pulled in. So we're going to do as factor comma levels equals labels. Again, that is coming from Stata. And then what we're going to do is comma and then PID. So we're actually going to wind up with PID as, as the variable we're going to use. Um, so we could just do P, uh, um, that's fine. I was, <laughs> I'm being more careful here because because we could just use PID instead of PID1 in that first one. Um, the reason why I flip it like that, the order, is just because um, if we can, it's better off using one that doesn't have a number or sort of A or B or something like that after it. All right, we're going to do PID equals recode underscore factor and PID1 comma and then we're going to label. I'm going to pull this back. We're going to label these um, just to be 
just to be super clear. So we're going to do um, 1 equals conservative, sorry, 1 dot conservative equals 1 dot conservative. All right, um, 2 dot labor oops, equals 2 dot labor. And then we're going to uh, we're going to keep SNP. Um, again, this is Scotland, so for the rest of the UK, the conservative, the number of conservative identifiers would be way higher. Um, but Labour and the SNP, and even, so this is 2014. I don't know what it is recently, but but it, it's very likely there's probably more SNP than Labour. But they're, but they're similar. Um, but right now, S&P is a fourth category. We're going to make it number three. So, oh, so we have four dot S&P that equals three dot S&P. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say um, make all the other values missing. So what we can do is a nice little shortcut here. We can do dot default equals and then we're going to call it na underscore character and that comes up so it's on na underscore character um, and then an underscore so uh, within tidyverse thing that so this would be part of four cats deploy or whatever but within tidyverse there's actually different types of missing values <laughs> um, and one of them is is as character usually normally it doesn't matter um, sometimes it can matter if you are recoding variables or combi uh, specifically where like you're combining um, different variables um, or you're merging or something like that where the NAs are, are classified differently. That can cause a problem. Um, I was not aware of that until I ran into a problem and was like stuck trying to figure out like why is this not working? And then I, I read up and saw that, oh, wait, maybe it's the NAs. And once I put them as the same type, problem solved. All right. So let's highlight this. I think it looks good. Let's highlight this and run it. Okay, so we didn't get yelled at. So we're going to do, let's just double check it. So count PID. All right, so that looks good. Okay, so now let's get to doing a multinomial logit. Um, there's two ways, there's two, not two ways, probably multiple ways, but there's two common ways that people run multinomial logit in R. Um, w one is using the multinom function that's part of the uh, nnet package. And then there is also a, a one um, mlogit, which is part of the mlogit package. Uh, we're going to do both just because, um, j just so you can see, see how they're done. Um, multinom is, is, is older. Um, and so people have used a lot and it's really fast and easy to specify. <clears throat> it has less flexibility though. mlogit function, um, is more difficult to specify, uh, but it's also more flexible. So there's kind of a trade-off here. All right, let's let's use this first one here. We're gonna do, we need to load n, n net, sorry, n net, <laughs> n, oh my God, n net. Why do I keep trying, yeah, all right, there we go. We load that, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna wrap summary around it like we've done before. I'm going to do summary. I'm going to save this as model.mlogit. And then the function is multi nom. And then we're going to specify it just as we have with the other regressions. So we have our outcome uh, variable first, PID, tilde, and then Scott plus trust plus age, and then we have to specify the data. Okay. All right, let's 
highlight this and then take a look. All right, so there's there's sort of less information than some of the other things we've seen. Um, one thing we should, well, one thing that stands out is that it's we we definitely don't have stars and, and we don't even have the stuff lined up like we did before. Um, the the coefficients we have for unordered are like combining a series of binary um, logits and running them simultaneously. So our variable Scott here, so we have Scott trust age, all right? These are our coefficient, estimate, whatever. Um, so this one here is the effect of labor versus conservative. So conservative is our baseline or comparison category. So um, when you run multinomial logit, one of the outcome variable categories is going to be your sort of your baseline or comparison. So the other ones are going to be compared to that. Um, often we use the um, outcome category with the most observations, or it could be one that you're like you want a particular comparison done. Um, the com particular comparison done is is completely fine as long as there's enough observations uh, to get good estimates. So here, because labor and S and P are larger um, in in Scotland. And conservatives are arguably, well, I mean, they are larger in the rest of the UK. Um, this is a this is a good one to keep as as the comparison. It's also default, so by default it'll be the first category. So you, we you can change that um, if you want. All right. So right. So this is for Scott. Uh, this is the coefficient for labor versus conservatives. This is the coefficient for S&P versus conservatives. Um, but these are the coefficients. Here are the standard errors. All right, so we can eyeball them to figure out like what is statistically significant, what is not. Um, again, we're looking to see is the coefficient at least twice the size of the standard error. Uh, one option we could do that's pretty simple is we can just divide them, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do summary model.mlogit. And the reason the reason why we're doing this is just to make it easier to see what's significant so we don't have to keep like going back and forth, going back and forth. Um, so we're gonna do summary model mlogit and then close that. And then we're gonna do dollar sign and then coefficients. And then we're gonna divide that by the standard error. So summary model m logit and then dollar sign standard errors. Okay. All right. So these are our um, z z values which are like the t values, you know, it's equivalent. So this is much easier, I think, to look to see what is statistically significant, what is not. So here we're looking to see is the absolute value at least two ish. All right. So for all of these, all of these are statistically significant. Okay. So all of them have a significant effect. All right. Um, one thing I want to show here is about plotting the coefficients. So we have, we did this early on and I did, I just did it once. I didn't do it in the other, some of the other videos because uh, it was roughly the same thing. Here it's a little bit different. Um, we are going to use a function from the G galley, G, G alley, ally. Again, this is where it's like, how do I pronounce this? Because I, I never talk about it out loud. Um, we're going to use a function that's specifically for plotting uh, multinomial regression coefficients. So we have gg, ally, ggalley, whatever. All right. 
So the, the function is gg coef. Hold on, I'm going to pull this back down just to give us a little more space. gg coef and then multinom. And then this is similar. We're going to include, right, like what's the model? And then we're going to label the variables. So this is this is similar to what we've done before. So variable underscore labels equals C. And then we're going to do Scott equals Scottish identity. And again, this is just, we're just doing this to make it look nicer. Trust equals government trust. And then age equals age. All right. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to bring this up to close out age. I'm going to do a comma. Um, show p values equals false. We don't want the p values. Um, we don't want the stars. Signif stars equals false. Um, okay, so this is the place where it's different. We want to specify um, the comparisons being made just so they're clear. So we're going to change this um, from what the default is. So we have Y level label. And again, so, so this is like saying, um, so we're going to change the labels here for what the coefficients. So currently, um, hold on a second. So currently it would be, it would show up as two dot labor. Um, and we want it to be more specific about what is the comparison here. So we have two dot lab labor. We're going to change this to labor versus conservative. And then we're going to do uh, three dot SNP. And we're going to change that to SNP versus conservative. Okay, I'm going to do a double close there, plus, and then we can just add a label here. So we're going to do labs title equals predicting partisan identification. And then on the X, we're just going to include here uh, multinomial logit coefficients. Oh, there we go. Okay, so again, um, we've looked at this before. It's very similar. This is just specific for multinomial, and the main difference is specifying the what the comparisons are. All right, so let's highlight this and run it. Oh, kind of hanging out, double close there. Takes a second. Okay, I'm going to click Zoom move it over and drag it. Okay. So now what we see is for each one of the predictors, we have two um, dots and, and lines. Um, just like before, the, the dot is the estimate and the lines are the confidence intervals. All right. Um, so the blue is blue-ish is for S&P versus conservative, and the reddish is labor versus conservative. Um, so you can see for each each of these. Okay. Um, in terms of checking, you know, statistical significance, the same idea before, that if the confidence intervals cross zero, then it's not significant. So it's not the case here, but, you know, it's very common where one of the comparisons is significant and the other is not. Um, that can cause some challenges with interpretations. Uh, you just have to be careful. Okay, so that is it for uh, this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.